Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and um, yeah, today we are doing a Game Week 14 Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid video. Yes, Game Week 13 has only just ended, but we are on Game Week 14 already. The Game Weeks right now are coming thick and fast, less than two days until the next deadline. So we are going to have to pack this content in a little bit. I know a lot of you guys do rely on these videos. Are you really doing uh, like these videos before you make your Game Week decisions and stuff like that? So I am going to make sure I'm working in double time so we've got a, at least a video slash stream every single day over the over all of these uh you know multiple game weeks in one calendar week type things so we are going to be working double time we're going to be making sure you've got plenty of content to be consuming before uh, each game week so yeah there we go guys uh, so if you do enjoy this video and all other videos please do leave a like as always and of course subscribe if you are new around here as well but before we go any further uh just a quick shout out to our sponsor today which is of course one football the mobile app slash website for all things football whether you're looking for scores on the doors, whether you're looking for the stats from the games, the lineups, all stuff like that, particularly for those games you're not watching, super, super useful app to have on your phone in particular, you know, as a kind of companion, I guess, to watching the football, particularly if there's a lot of games playing at the same time. We saw that on Sunday today. We saw a lot of games being played at the same time, for example. So really nice to have that app on your phone. Check out what's going on all over the world, completely free. And uh, yeah, you can get the link in uh, the description if you want to go download that. So buys are players you probably don't have but should consider bringing in, sells are players you probably have but should consider removing, keeps are players you probably have and should keep, and avoids are players that uh, are pretty hyped up right now. I think you should actually avoid getting in these players rather than buying them. So there you go. Those are the rules. We've got two in each category, guys. Let's have a look and see what our buys are for this week. So Diogo Jota is our first game week 14 buy. Definitely the most important player to buy right now, you would say. And looking at the fact that he, he kind of plays centrally, he's kind of really greedy at the moment. He's playing in a really advanced position. I think he could easily match Salah over the next few game weeks. Genuinely, I really think that could happen. He doesn't want to be second best in this Liverpool team. He has no inferiority complex. He wants to be the number one attacker at Liverpool. And you can see that in his game. And I kind of do say this fairly often. Anytime we're talking about Jota, when he is getting a regular run in, in the team he just has that desire doesn't he it's so nice to see he was seriously impressive in the Southampton game he took seven shots all in the box three big chances as well uh, no player beats him out of any of those game week 13 stats um, at, at the time of uh, recording anyway because I haven't got all of the stats from the most recent games uh, the the uh, the Manchester United versus Chelsea game I haven't got those stats yet but uh, yeah no I, I seriously doubt anyone beat Jota's stats in that regard and uh, you know he could have easily had more than two goals there he could have had another goal if a uh, what, what, in particular, one that Salah could have passed through to him and, and that Salah's pass was a little bit wayward. So, yeah, he could have been on for even more points. Genuinely, it was it was really amazing. And the um, the fixtures, they look really good for Jota as well. And we kind of expect him to play every single game until Firmino is back. And then, shortly after, he will be nailed once again when Salah and Mane leave for the Africa Cup of Nations. So, he's an absolute bargain at 7.7 .7 million. He's playing in the best attack in the league where goals are a abundant and you can get in on those goals for such a cheap uh, such a cheap price compared to those other Liverpool attackers and with everyone kind of owning Salah and Trent Jota is the best opportunity to capitalize on Liverpool's good form and get the edge over your rivals because all of your rivals they already all have Salah and Trent don't they so you've got to act quickly you know if you don't do if you don't act quickly you're going to kind of be in a situation where everyone else owns Jota too so what we want to do is uh, kind of make sure that, that we get in on his points now before everyone else realises and buys a Jota as well. And, uh, you know, as long as your second transfer also improves your team, I would even take a minus four just to get Jota into your team. That's how, that's how strongly I feel about this one. Our next buy is Marcus Alonso. Now, unfortunately, I made my buy, sell, keep, avoid video a little bit early last week before the Champions League game, uh, before Chilwell's injury. So maybe I'm kind of one week late on this shout, maybe. Um, you know, th those of you who, who watched some of my other videos last week, you would know that Alonso came straight into my team, ready for the United game. Didn't work out in one game week, but it, over several game weeks, we are hoping for a little bit better. So... I am recording this video literally immediately after the full-time whistle of the Chelsea United game. So I don't know the uh, the stats for game week 13 for uh, Alonso. Um, you can kind of blame the tight fixture schedule for that. But those of you who watch the game and, you know, games before that, you know exactly what you get from Alonso, a fullback who genuinely seems to think he's a striker. He plays so advanced. He always wants to shoot. He's on free kicks. He's on corners. He loves to get in the box. He's usually so far out of position to a fight 
fault. But that's great for FPL. We want defenders who attack. And a, a few players in the Premier League fit the description of defenders that like to attack better than Marcus Alonso. We already saw what he can do at the beginning of this season. Chelsea's lack of other left-back options at the moment means that he's sure to start the vast majority of games. And those of you doubting that, saying players like maybe Azpilicueta or Saul might play there, uh, no matter kind of what you think about Alonso, do you really think playing those players so badly out of position will really be any better? Do you really think that, that uh, Chelsea will be able to do what they want to do with these super Super advanced fullbacks, these super attacking wingbacks, right? With um, some of those other players, like an Aspel Equator there. I just can't really see it working 100% of the time. It, it, it would be a situation that at least want to avoid if possible. And they have Alonso. Alonso's right there and he will do a job for them. Um, he, he really will uh, in, in Chilwell's absence. He's already done a job for them at the beginning of the season. So uh, there we go. Um, so, especially in games like Watford, you know, we don't really need, well, Chelsea don't really need to play an Asper Equator or someone like that. They're, you know, they can keep going gung-ho with the fullbacks. It's a really, really nice fixture. Uh, this Watford team in particular is a good shout for the worst defence in the league right now as well, with it being pretty much impossible to uh, predict the Chelsea forwards, the wing backs are probably going to be the right way to attack a team like Watford with our Chelsea players, right? So uh, adding Alonso to a defence of Trent Cancelo and Rhys James, that's really what we want to be doing right now. That's what I really, really like. The uh, big at the back, Alonso, I think has to join the gang. On to some sales. Our first sell is Brian and Bumo. Okay, I've been hyping up and Bumo for some time now. I think it's finally time to just admit that I was wrong on this one. Uh, you know, maybe he's just not a very good football player. I don't know. Um, I, I do like to always try and stay positive if I can. But you know, at a certain point, you have to, I don't know. I don't know. You Sometimes you maybe have to stop trying to just be positive about everything and maybe try and be a little bit more realistic. It has been hard to watch him play, you know, um, see him in those good positions, seeing him come so, come so close to scoring so many times, hitting the post, as we know. And, you know, I'm a huge advocate for being patient with players if the signs are positive. But, uh, number one, patience has to end at some point. And two, can you even call the signs positive? Because you can look at Mbumo and say he's been unlucky, but when a player is unlucky over and over and over again at what point do you say okay maybe this isn't bad luck maybe the play player is maybe just a little bit of a poor finisher uh, the lack of conviction when he looks when you look at some of his shots that he takes does he really want to score does he have that hunger that desire like you see with some other players Brentford they're a very frustrating team in FPL terms in general a huge variety of uh, seemingly random goal scorers in all of these Brentford games players overperforming and underperforming on their stats all over the pitch one week they look like they're a good defense one week they look like they're, they're rubbish defense and I think the frustration that you get with Brentford is best summed up with a player like Mbumo and perhaps the last straw was his pointless yellow card for time wasting in the 95th minute of that Everton game I don't want frustrating players in my team and neither do you guys so it, it might just be time to to cut Mbumo out Gallagher He's the obvious replacement there, Conor Gallagher, uh, maybe Smith-Rowe uh, as well. I think I prefer Gallagher though. Uh, but all of those players who are cheaper than Mbumo, if you're thinking of moving to like a Hoiberg or, or someone else random who's, who's a little bit cheaper than Mbumo, I really don't think it's worth your time at all. I don't think any of those players are really going to score more than Mbumo and that's kind of saying something at the moment. So um, if you are going to change Mbumo, um, either t take him down to a 4.5 and, and change up your formation or just, um, or you're going to have to upgrade him, I, I think. That's what I'd probably do there. But yeah, however you do it, I think it is time to cut the umbilical cord, take the L on this one, and just sell uh, mini Adam Atroyore. <laughs> My next sell is Phil Foden. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was kind of struggling for a second sell today. Other than the really obvious ones, you know, your, your Havertz, your Chilwell because he's injured and players like that. Um, you know, and the ones, of, of course, we've spoken about in previous game weeks. Um, I was kind of drawing a blank a little bit. So let's talk about Foden for a minute. Now, this one's a bit of a mystery because it, it seems almost impossible to find out anything definitive about the extent of his injury. Is it a foot injury? Is it a knock? Is it both? Um, what we do know is that he hasn't even made the bench for City's last two games in all competitions. And we do know that Pep likes to ease his players back into the team after an injury very slowly um, just to make sure it doesn't reoccur. So... It doesn't look too good. Is the best case scenario or him getting kind of some minutes off the bench in game week 14? Are his minutes going to be kind of managed for a little while thereafter? Obviously, this could all change with new information, but 
even if he does play, is he going to be playing super wide again? You know, while those central players for Man City, they're the guys picking up the points, not the wide guys. So this is the situation. Since Foden has been playing out wide, he's not looked good. Two shots in two games whilst he was playing out wide. 0.06 expected goals. So it's not even, even those shots, they weren't even good shots, you know. Uh, if he continues to play out wide, you know, add to that Christmas rotation risk, even if we completely ignore the injury, is he just a bad FPL option no matter how we look at it? Even if he's put completely fit, if there's going to be a little bit of rotation and he's going to be playing out wide, do we really want him anyway? Uh, particularly if, um, you know, we're looking at the price here. He's a pretty expensive player. So if you're trying to fund some other moves, for example, maybe you want to get Jota or another Man City midfielder in your team, um, perhaps Foden would be the guy you would be willing to sacrifice in order to do that. On to some keeps, we've got Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, Ronaldo is one of the most sold players ahead of game week 14. And with him being benched uh, for the Chelsea game, I can always, I, can, I, I just see it. Those sales are going to accelerate. Everyone who has Ronaldo will jump off him um, somehow. Because people always seem to forget that if a big player gets rested one game, that actually increases their chances of playing the next game. I know people think, oh, if he's rested one game, that means he's going to get rested again. 90% of the time, particularly when we're talking about good players, um, it means the exact opposite of that. It, it should give us more confidence of them playing the following re week, right? But that's kind of besides the point. That was not really the point I wanted to make here. Um, the point is that you're going to want Ronaldo pretty soon. With a new attacking manager and the most insanely good fixture swing after game week uh, 15, is it? Uh, so yeah, fr from game week 15 onwards, you're going to want to have Ronaldo and you're going to want to captain him sometimes as well. So I'm kind of planning on getting Ronaldo in my team in game week 16 so in a way I do kind of want people to sell him so I can get Ronaldo in game week 16 at a cheaper price but I would be doing you guys a disservice if I told you to sell him because ultimately you know the priority on this channel is to give you the best advice um, I possibly can in terms of FBL and if I had Ronaldo in my team right now I would definitely be keeping him no knee jerks to Vardy uh, no punts on players like Kane um, Ronaldo he's kind of doing decent enough 11 shots all in the box in the four games prior to game week 13. Two big chances, two big chances created. Nothing amazing, but certainly not too horrible considering how horrible United have been as a whole. And I really do think he can do even better in, in, with some really nice fixtures, new management. I think this is going to actually look really good. And I, I, I don't know... I don't think too many of you guys are going to disagree with me too much because he's Ronaldo. Why wouldn't he um, fulfil his potential in, uh, in, a, in a slightly better, well, I don't want to say a better team, but a, a team under slightly better management, slightly better guidance, and a team with much better fixtures as well. It all adds up. There's not really too much argument here. I think we all know that Ronaldo is going to kick off soon, kick on soon, should I say. So, yeah, I would definitely be keeping him. My next keep is Rafinha, and I'm seeing a lot of people selling Rafinha this week, usually to get in players like Jossa or Bernardo Silva. And I guess I can kind of understand if that's literally your only way of getting those players in. But surely there are some strong arguments for keeping Rafinha, right? Next fixture is Crystal Palace, who, despite on a, you know an improving attack, they are still shipping so many goals. They're conceding a lot right now. And if Leeds are to score in this Crystal Palace game which you kind of expect them to, the likelihood is that Rafinha is going to be involved in that. We've also got the fact that these next couple of game weeks are really tight together. So there's going to be a little bit of rotation all over the place, all around the Premier League um, for those players who are, you know, the, for the less key players. But Rafinha is a very much a key player for Leeds. He's very nailed on. He's going to be playing every single game. They can't go without him. They really, really can't. Um, he's going to kind of take away a, a lot of that risk of going for a player who, who is potentially... A bit of a rotation risk so particularly if you're thinking of switching to a Man City player for example um, you know, Rafinha is going to be playing the next two game weeks if you look at the next two game weeks they look pretty good for Rafinha and you know he's going to play both of those games maybe your best bet is just just to stick with him just to stick with him just for a, a little while maybe after game week 14 or game week 15 then maybe yeah, okay that's fair enough that's a great time to sell I totally do understand that particularly with all these upcoming fixture swings but Unless this is literally your only route to Diogo Jota, it does kind of seem like whatever you do with Rafinha is going to be a bit of a sideways move. So maybe just try and wait one more week on him. 
Finally, some avoids. We've got Raul Jimenez. Uh, if you have Jimenez, you absolutely must keep him. Burnley at home, very decent fixture. But after that, the fixtures do take a serious nosedive and you will be looking to sell no matter what situation you're in. So in game week 15, Wolves play Liverpool. Then it's City then it's Brighton away, and then it's Chelsea. And it really kind of can't get too much worse than that in terms of bad runs of fixtures, can it? Even that nice Burnley fixture, how badly do you want Jimenez just for one Burnley fixture? He's done okay, he's ticked along nicely, but Jimenez is not exactly a player who sets the world alight, is he? You know, even if you are kind of looking to bring Jimenez in for a one-week punt, you know, Jimenez versus Burnley. Wolves are unlikely to score more than two goals. One goal would probably be considered a success, wouldn't it? Which means we're not going to get a Jimenez haul, really, are we? And then we're kind of lumped with Jimenez for the this upcoming run of horrible fixtures. Or we'd go straight back to the drawing board after having Jimenez for just one week trying to find the solution to our forward problem all over again. Now, that kind of seems a little bit crazy uh, as a transfer to make in the, in the short term, in the medium term. But it's even crazier when you are looking at him as a one-week punt. So I would just really steer clear completely of Jimenez and I kind of look for a slightly better option for a slightly longer period of time or just stick with what you've got. And our final avoid is Emmanuel Dennis. Uh, this is not the solution to your forward problems. Surely not. Uh, Chelsea and City are the next two games back to back, playing the two defences recognised as the toughest two in the league. And then we've got little old Dennis on great form, making a mockery of his underlying stats. But is he good enough? Is, is he going to keep overperforming against the likes of these defences? Is he going to do that? He's got five assists. Dennis has from just 1.6 expected assists. Are his teammates good enough to overperform and convert, significantly overperform and convert these chances that he's creating against Mendy and Edison? Surely not. Now, don't get me wrong. I have very much got my eyes on Dennis and after these two nightmare fixtures, things do look a lot nicer for a little while. Dennis could be an absolutely heroic pick in the games against Brentford, Burnley, Palace at home after that. And he's really, really cheap as well. Definitely a player worth considering if you're planning on downgrading a forward so you could maybe spend the money upgrading another position. Dennis is a great way of freeing up some cash. But only if you're going to bench him for the Chelsea and City games because it's kind of tough to see him getting anything against either of those oppositions. If you are buying Dennis with the intention of him being your new star striker, I think you might be a little bit disappointed. But if you're buying him um, to, to, to put on your bench for now and, and use that money elsewhere in your team, Completely fair enough. Completely understand that. But uh, if you're playing him to, pl if you're buying him to play him right away, I think he has to go down as an avoid, unfortunately. So quick summary: uh, Jota, he's your priority move right now. If you don't already have him, get him in. Alonso, really good shout as well. Maybe Gundogan, Silver at City, they could be good too. Forwards, sorry guys, I'm still clueless. I'm still very confused about the forward situation. I, I can't work it out. You know, I did suggest Benteke before, but he got blank last week. Is he going to return this coming week? I don't know, maybe. Benteke would still be my number one forward choice, I suppose, uh, in this game week. But, ugh, you know, I don't know. Uh, but him, uh, Jimenez, Dennis, they're not going to be your solutions, I don't think. But Ronaldo owners, on the other hand, I think you can be positive about him moving forward in future game weeks. I know he's been a little bit disappointing, but please try and remain positive and patient with Ronaldo. Your time will come. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy what we saw today, please do leave a like and please do subscribe as well if you are new around here. I would massively appreciate that. Guys, we're going to do a team selection video tomorrow, Monday, uh, and uh, I, I'm going to do a deadline stream on Tuesday, but I might try and fit in one more stream somewhere. I have no idea where, um, but I just want to make sure you guys have got plenty of content to consume ahead of game week uh, 14. I don't want I don't want the game week 14 become, to become the neglected game week because, uh, you know, they're all, all, each game week is important as the last even if they are quite tight together so there you go guys thank you so much for watching once again and i will see you later mates bye, -bye.